better safe than sorry. After the explosion of Ship 33 on Flight 7, SpaceX realized even more the importance of being careful during rocket testing. It has a point. Given the immense power of the Starship Raptor rocket engine, any small error could lead to a disaster that would impact public safety and the program's long-term goals. It explains why SpaceX was so careful in setting the testing goals for Flight 8. In today's episode, we'll dive into the progress toward Flight 8, the flight's goals, and how the flight will impact SpaceX's future plans. Anyway, our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. On January 16th, SpaceX launched its seventh Starship rocket on a test flight that didn't go nearly as far as many had hoped. So, what's the progress on Starship Flight 8? And what does SpaceX aim for in the upcoming launch? Starship Flight 8 will see the use of Booster 15 and Ship 34, the second Block 2 ship readied for launch. The two have had their main structures already assembled and have both undergone cryogenic proof tests on their tanks. They then were back at the assembly site getting Raptor engines installed, flaps, and other final components added on. More notably, on February 9th, Booster 15 experienced a successful full-duration static fire test, 24 days after Flight 7. Afterward, it's expected to roll back for checks before rolling out once again ahead of launch. Ship 34 might follow soon. The vehicle is on the static fire stand and on its way to Massey's for its engine tests. Test Tank 16 was moved from the Star Factory to Massey's test site for upcoming structural testing. The movement of Test Tank 16 to Massey's aligns with SpaceX's ongoing development and testing of Starship hardware, reflecting the company's continuous efforts to refine and test their rocket technology. Once these steps are completed, SpaceX will need additional time to fully stack both stages conduct the final testing campaign, and finalize the installation, including the Flight Termination System FTS. Meanwhile, the usual pre-testing operations are in Pad B. The chopsticks have opened and raised to the launch position, and the ship quick disconnect arm that connects to the rocket for loading propellants tested its capability to swing back to clear the rocket for launch. Given the current pace of progress, the end of February target still appears feasible. While SpaceX has not yet announced any official launch date, there is news that the firm has applied to the FCC for a communications license for Starship Flight 8, with a start date of February 24, 2025. It means Starship Test Flight 8 launch will be no earlier than February 24. To meet that date, SpaceX has to overcome the hardest part, FAA's approval, which follows the completion of the Flight 7 accident investigation. SpaceX will first have to submit its mishap investigation results to the FAA before it can gain approval for another flight. Following the Starship Flight 7 failure, the Federal Aviation Administration FAA, initiated a debris response area, briefly restricting airspace near Turks and Caicos. This action, along with flight diversions, caused travel delays. Debris from the failed launch has been discovered across the islands. The Turks and Caicos Reef Fund, in collaboration with the government, has compiled a database documenting the wreckage found on every beach of Providenciales and spanning the Caicos banks. There is a report of property damage, with debris possibly hitting a vehicle in South Caicos although the FAA has only confirmed one report of minor damage to a vehicle. The FAA requires SpaceX to maintain liability insurance for such claims, but it's rare for debris from U.S. rockets to cause damage, and there are no known public records of third-party property damage claims in commercial spaceflight. Authorities in Turks and Caicos met with SpaceX representatives and the UK's Air Accidents Investigation Branch to plan debris recovery. While this could further delay SpaceX's timelines, I bet that Elon Musk's rocket company will do its best to turn the thing around. This is important because they are looking at 25 Starship launches this year, 
including a goal of catching up with the Starship upper stage by 2025, allowing for 100% rocket recovery. To move closer to catching Starship in the future, Flight 8 needs to successfully complete the objectives that Flight 7 couldn't. Flight 7 partially succeeded by catching the booster, making future catches more probable. However, the Block 2 ship design validation was incomplete due to the upper stage's failure. This leads to the incompletion of the deployment of its first satellites in space and several heat shield tests including new tile designs and missing tiles, to stress test it during re-entry. Consequently, Flight 8 will likely repeat Flight 7's mission, including heat shield testing and deploying dummy Starlink satellites. This means Flight 8 will likely be another suborbital flight with a splashdown in the Indian Ocean. If that's true, on Flight 8, SpaceX will deploy 10 mock satellites, similar in size and weight to next-generation Starlink satellites. Starlink version 3. This would have been the first ever payload deployment for Starship. These mock satellites will not remain in orbit and will splash down in the Indian Ocean after their suborbital flight. SpaceX would begin launching Starlink version 3 satellites before they were catching and reusing Starships. SpaceX's third generation Starlink satellites are a major advancement in their internet service. Each satellite is designed for significantly higher data transmission rates, with the ability to download 1 terabit of data per second and upload 160 gigabits per second. These satellites are much larger and heavier than previous versions, weighing approximately 1,900 kilograms. They will be launched using the Starship rocket, with each launch potentially adding a substantial amount of capacity to the Starlink network. The third-generation satellites incorporate advanced technologies for computing, modems, and data routing. They are designed to achieve low latency, meaning minimal delays in data transmission, by operating in a lower Earth orbit. These satellites also feature increased capacity for data transfer between satellites, which is essential for a robust network. SpaceX offers a third-generation Starlink standard kit which includes the necessary equipment for connecting to the satellite internet service. The kit includes cables, a router, a dish, and a power supply. The Starlink service provides download speeds of up to 250 megabits per second. The router uses Wi-Fi 6 technology to efficiently cover a large area and support many connected devices. SpaceX plans to begin deploying these third-generation Starlink satellites in the near future. It's important to have a clear view of the sky to connect to the satellite network. Please note that using a Starlink kit outside its original sales region may incur extra fees. SpaceX has requested permission from the Federal Communications Commission to deploy nearly 30,000 of these satellites. For the heat shield testing, S-33's heat shield used the latest generation tiles and included a backup layer to protect from missing or damaged tiles. Starship's heat shield is the biggest gating item in SpaceX's goal of rapid and reliable rocket reusability. In addition to new ceramic tiles, SpaceX will likely test a few metal heat tiles, including one with active cooling, on Flight 8 as it continues searching for the right heat shielding solution. There were rumors that Flight 8 could see the first orbital flight in ship catch attempts, but that is unlikely given Starship Block 2's first launch failure. While this may prolong the journey to full reuse, it is better to be safe than sorry. SpaceX has to commit to its principle of safety, especially when the company is taking responsibility for Artemis 3, the first crewed lunar landing since Apollo 17 in December 1972. So, how about you? Do you agree with the idea of repeating Flight 7's goal in Flight 8? Don't hesitate to drop the heart icon in the comment section below if you agree. SpaceX's Starship plays a crucial role in NASA's Artemis 3 mission. As part of NASA's Artemis program, SpaceX is developing a modified version of its Starship spacecraft, known as the Human Landing System, HLS, to transport astronauts from lunar orbit to the moon's surface and back. 
NASA formally entered the picture in 2021, awarding SpaceX a $2.89 billion contract, making Starship a cornerstone of the Artemis III mission. A further $1.15 billion contract modification in 2022 added a second crewed landing for Artemis IV. The Artemis III mission involves multiple spacecraft and advanced technologies. The mission is intended to land a woman and a person of color on the moon. The crew will launch aboard NASA's Orion spacecraft using the Space Launch System rocket to travel to lunar orbit. Separately, the Starship HLS will launch from Earth using SpaceX's Super Heavy Booster, a reusable rocket powered by 33 Raptor engines. The Starship HLS will then enter lunar orbit and dock with the Orion spacecraft. Two Artemis crew members will transfer from Orion to Starship and descend to the lunar surface. The two astronauts will conduct up to four spacewalks on the moon, performing scientific observations and collecting samples, including water ice. After about a week on the lunar surface, the astronauts will return to the Orion spacecraft in Starship. SpaceX's Starship HLS presents several innovative features. Refueling operations are planned to occur in Earth orbit to fully fuel the Starship for its journey to the Moon. The Starship HLS will give the astronauts a special ride en route to the Moon and back to the Orion spacecraft. Prior to the crewed Artemis III mission, SpaceX will perform an uncrewed landing demonstration mission on the Moon. NASA is providing SpaceX with specific requirements to prepare Starship for the Artemis III mission drawing upon the agency's extensive experience in human spaceflight. SpaceX has pledged to share its data from Starship flight tests with NASA to refine the design for Artemis III and help NASA manage risks and mature its landing tasks. NASA is also working with SpaceX to further develop the Starship lander to meet an extended set of requirements for Artemis IV, including landing more mass on the moon and docking with the agency's Gateway Lunar Space Station for crew transfer. As of December 2024, NASA anticipates that Artemis III will launch no earlier than mid-2027 due to heat shield issues on Orion and valve problems in the spacecraft's life support system. In August 2023, NASA officials expressed a willingness to fly Artemis III without a crewed landing due to delays in Starship's development potentially turning the mission into a crewed visit to the Lunar Gateway. In April 2024, NASA was internally evaluating alternative mission options, including a docking test between Orion and Starship HLS in low Earth orbit. In conclusion, it would be exciting to see SpaceX gradually perfecting its Starship program to serve the long-term goal of space exploration. Wishing them all the best on Flight 8. By the way, let's send your best wishes to the company by commenting on this video. Thanks for watching till the end.